Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and the 6.5 is live at Dell Technologies World 2023 in Las Vegas. We attended an amazing in-person event. The excitement is high. I love the big stage events. Dan, it's good to be back. It is good to be back. It's good to be on the road, Pat, as we like to call it. You know, yes. we have on the road, we have in the booth, we have our insider, but these are on the road. We are here at Dell Technologies World 2023. And, you know, Pat, it is kind of the, are we in the middle? But we're in like the middle late end of what feels like a three or four month wave. And when you think about waves, you can't help but think about tidal waves. And we've had a tidal wave of AI. And Let's just say we've had some great conversations here. I hope everybody's tuned into all of them. But we haven't had one that's been really dedicated to this topic. I think this oh, is time. Oh, I think it's time. Surprise, we're here and we're with Varun to talk about AI. Thanks for coming back on the 6-5, Varun. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me, guys. It's always a pleasure to, to chat with you. He's definitely an alumnus. Oh, to yes, totally, yes. totally. He's been on the show before. Um, and it's fun because of your diversity in terms of how you can talk about telco, cloud, multi-cloud, AI. I think we've had a different topic every single time you've been on the show, which is fun. Um, but, you know, by the way, just that was a compliment. By the oh, way. I know. I okay. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Very, was that not clear? Yeah, no, well, that was pretty I, clear. I just want to make sure. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, that was a compliment. Yeah. Um, so I want to start off, though, because one of the things... Like, you know, I kind of made a joke to Sam Brokaw. I said, they peppered in AI. No, they didn't pepper in AI. AI was prevalent throughout the whole show. Yes. But, you know, we are in this sort of era, and every session we've been in, there's kind of this side of the continuum. People are like, yes, 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 AI, AI, AI. And you can get this other side of the continuum, and they're like a little bit more oh, skeptical, yeah. Yeah. a little bit more yep. uncertain. But the, the, the genie's not going back in the bottle here. Yes. We're moving forward with this. What's your take, though? What's real? What's hype? What do you think about this generative AI movement? Look, it's a great question. Um, there is a lot of hype. We can debate, you know, whether this is, you know, too frothy, too less. I, I, I don't remember who it was, it was Bill Gates or someone who said, transformative, when there's transformative technology, and you're at that inflection point, as human beings, we get very excited and we often overestimate the impact in the short term, but we drastically underestimate the impact of those things in the long term. And I, and I often remind myself about that when we, over the last few months, um, I, I think you're right, Daniel, that that the where customers customers are today for generative AI is a spectrum, right? There are customers who are saying, hey, uh, okay, great that you guys are doing this. Where do I get started? Right? The concept makes sense. What use cases should I be putting this in? Right? There are customers who are saying, oh, I've 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 taken an open source model off of Hugging Face. I'm training it with my data. I need to figure out how to scale this. And then there's an even smaller subset of customers that are so mature that they're saying, or so cutting edge, I would say, that are trying to train their own model from scratch, right? So there is a gamut. I think the, as with all things, the, the kind of the, the vast majority of people are, are somewhere in the middle. Uh, so, look, I, I just think we're, it, it, it's very clear, though, that we're on the precipice of something that will be right. truly transformative. I, I don't. I don't possess the, the vision to say, oh, it's going to go this way or this way. It just feels like it's really, really big. There's a lot of different things that can be done with generative AI. Yeah. And I know uh, people glommed on early on to the text uh, yes. form of yes. that, but it, it, it is truly multimedia. It's text, it's yeah. video, it's images, yeah. and all the things you can do with it. And you can train it on world data. You That's can right. train it on a narrow set of vertical enterprise data and, and everything in between. What are some of the more interesting generative AI use cases that that, that, you're, that, that, that you're seeing? And, and here at Dell Tech World, I'm sure you're having conversations with your with your customers about this too. Yeah, I, I think I think um, I, I will start with you know some examples that that we're doing at Dell, and maybe talk a little bit about what we're seeing with some of our customers as well. I, it's it's really hard to put a, a cap around these areas because. By the time we finish this conversation, there will likely be a new use case somewhere right. that, that that's happening in this in this building probably. But but uh, you know I, I think you're right. LLMs are the place where a lot of people are starting. Uh, Pat, you're absolutely right. At um, on the show floor here at Dell Tech World, uh, one of the demos that we're doing in in our modern in data infrastructure space is actually um, a real life demo that we've built with our with Jen Felch's digital organization. We've taken an open source model um, called Bloom. Uh, it's one of the more popular models on, on Hugging Face. 
and we've actually tuned it with publicly available data that we have on um, our Dell knowledge base, right? We have right. a lot of customers that go to our knowledge base and say, well, how do I deploy this? Uh, I'm having trouble with this. What's the configuration error I'm making here, et cetera. And we know internally, we've seen based on search patterns, it takes customers five or six searches to find exactly what they need. So how do we simplify that, right? This is the situation. This is a use case that's built for, for an LLM or, a, or, or as Satya would say, a co-pilot, right? Right. So you go in, you type, this is the problem I'm trying to solve. And you get an answer that's curated for based on your search history and it, and it draws from multiple articles, right? But even there, we're just scratching the surface. Right now, it gives you a curated answer. You can imagine where, where you could take this, right? You could go from just getting an answer to say, oh, actually, here's a Terraform deployment script, right? That will help you deploy this infrastructure based on knowledge of what infrastructure you've deployed, you know, whatever information you share with us, et cetera. So that's one example. Um, other examples that we've heard of right now, there was a, um, a Carrie Brisky, who's, who's from NVIDIA and had joined us on stage yesterday. She shared that um, in, in the HR space, using this for uh, you know virtual assistance on HR tickets internally can shave off a massive amount of time in response and resolving issues by using kind of, again, knowledge-based articles that are maybe more internal, not necessarily publicly available, but in the HR database and responses that are used from... Um, uh, you know, previous interactions and, and tune that. The other places where we're starting to see a lot of interest is in um, customer-facing scenarios are, um, you know, chatbots are an obvious place to go, but even virtual sales assistants, right? So uh, as a customer is having a conversation with uh, a sales a salesperson, uh, you know, as long as, as long as there's no privacy issues, you know, a sales assistant listening to uh, the conversation and actually providing real-time feedback to the seller, hey, maybe you should go talk about this we know this person likes this, et cetera, that kind of stuff. So it, it, LLMs are definitely where this is starting. The other place on the, the multimodal nature path that you've talked about beyond LLMs is I need schematics for maybe I'm throwing an event, right? I want to do figure out how I'm going to gonna get the schematic out uh, for how the booth should be laid out, right? Or how I want a particular meeting to happen. So that's think of that as like text input providing um, you know, diagrams and, and graphics out there. You, you see, uh, I was just going to say, like you see in Copilot, you, you mentioned that, like what they're doing with like being able to take text and generate a PowerPoint. That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, yeah. that's pretty powerful stuff. It is. It is. Word and documents. We've played with stable diffusion. Yeah. And we saw the ability, and sorry, I didn't mean to cut. No, I thought no, absolutely. you were. Yeah, of course. I just was getting excited. Yes, exactly. When you start yeah. thinking about the, the, Pat, you make such a good point. When you start thinking about, like you said, if it's just text in the end, it really becomes like a really sophisticated search, search engine. That's because right. Because it's like, oh, now it's simplifying. It's kind of condensing, helping me. It's picking me the re, the, re, the references instead of making me kind of do it. Okay, that's good. But in the long run, when you start to take all the different modals of media, you start to create it. It's two way. It's conversational. On top yeah. of that, it does yeah. video. Yeah. And, and it, no, you're right. It gets pretty cool. And, and by the way, yeah. we're democratizing it. You know, you mentioned okay. everybody. So I'm, glad you, do I'm it. so glad you said that. I, I, this is one of the things that really excites me about this. Um, one of the things that comes up with generative AI, the first conversation is like, oh, my employees can be more, much more productive. Yes. And yes, of course they can, right? We didn't even talk about marketing use cases. Like I'm in marketing. It's easier than ever to create a, a first draft of a blog post. And then of course you need human intervention to, to kind of make it your voice. But we've internally seen how fast, it, and you know, you can compress content creation schedules by like, I don't know, from like two weeks to three days, right? But, but so product, productivity is going to be a big boost. I would argue the thing that we are not, we're not fully comprehending yet is the democratization of creativity. Because if you think about it, let's say you're a person in HR, right? And you have an idea for, I'm seeing people come in and talk to us about HR issues and our ticketing system, et cetera, et cetera. You have the expertise about how those HR interactions are going. Let's say you had an idea that said, I, wanna, I have this idea to, to build an app to completely transform the employee experience. You don't know how to do development, right? Right. You don't know how to build apps. Can you imagine what's going to happen inside enterprises now when these tools are made available to employees who previously did not have access? Oh, to it's going to be. I mean, it's going to be like taking us from typewriter to word processor, uh, taking us to desktop publishing when we didn't have before. Um, you know, 
again, this may just sound completely bizarre, but kind of printing press type of. It really is uh, like that. Uh, it is like that. It yeah. is like that. And I agree. And it's really interesting too, because you're already starting to see it. You know, we've seen announcements from software providers over the last several weeks, SAP ServiceNow, that have basically are starting to do Oracle, starting to do with, right. with AI, some of the exact use cases that you're mentioning, and it can do it very, very quickly. And it's democratizing it. And it's also, like I said, smaller companies because of open source are going to be able to adopt this very quickly to, to be able to, I, I keep saying there's going to be more small, big companies than ever. Meaning big companies with small numbers of people. It's like, that's only used to be hedge funds. So you guys made an announcement, Project Helix. Love to get your point of view. Uh, what did you think about that? So, um, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot to talk about there, but Let's just start with the customer context, right? I, I, I talked a little bit about how there's a spectrum of, of, of uh, maturity as with any transformative technology or technology trend, I would say. So that's one thing we're looking to solve. The other thing what we're finding is as we talk to customers is um, as enterprises are starting to, to scratch the surface on what Gen AI can do for them, there's unique needs, right? Uh, how, do you, how do you make sure the data can be trusted? If you're gonna put an LLM in front of a customer for a customer facing scenario, could be a chatbot, uh, the answer has to be accurate. It has to be appropriate. Right? It is very, very difficult to test all of those things out because sure. you just don't know what an LLM, how an LLM is going to respond to a specific input. One word in the input could change the output completely. So how do you create enterprise guardrails around making sure that the answer can be trusted, it is consistent with the brand voice, um, how do you make sure if you're going to use multi if you're going to use uh, proprietary high value data sets, your own business intelligence? How do you make sure there's privacy and security? Um, you, we, to, we talked about models, right? General purpose models aren't going to be the be all and end all for these very domain specific use cases. And then how do you do it at scale? And where do you get the the expertise from? These are the unique um, concerns and and things that we're we're finding enterprises are navigating. So Helix is really an attempt to help solve that. It takes a lot of the technology we have available today, our infrastructure, our server, our storage, our infrastructure management software, uh, NVIDIA's accelerators, NVIDIA's software frameworks, that customers today can, can, can take advantage of, but they have to build all of that together and build that stack up and, and figure out all of the, how all these things work together. It's really about providing full stack solutions that are very specific to customer needs. If a customer wants to train a pre-existing model using our infrastructure and NVIDIA's uh, or tune a model, I should say, in NVIDIA's frameworks, uh, we're going to create a solution for that as part of Helix. If they want to build a model from scratch and train that and, and put the massive compute power needed for that, we want a solution that's going to help them with that. If they're further along the deployment lifecycle and they want to deploy this in production, what's the, what's the training infrastructure look like? What does the inferencing infrastructure at the edge look like? What do I use? How many GPUs do I need? Do I need GPUs for inferencing? The blueprints, the... Uh, the deployment know-how, the guidance, that's really what bringing all of that together for these very horizontal use cases, um, or, or rather delivering a horizontal platform that customers can then build their vertical needs on top of is really what we're trying to do with Helix is reduce that friction to get started, to deploy them at production. Dell has always been a partner focused uh, yeah. company and you know it knew which swim lanes to stick to and then which ones to partner. Uh, just here at Dell Tech World, I mean, we saw uh, Microsoft on the big stage. Uh, we saw Red Hat, Red Hat yeah. and with Helix, we saw NVIDIA, right? Uh, I think I know the answer to this, but I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear you answer this, which is, uh, can we expect more of these AI partnerships in the future? Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think absolutely. And and look, um, as you said, Pat, and as you as as hopefully people are seeing, not just at this Dell Tech World, but 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 even recently. Uh, previous events, this this is going to be a vast ecosystem. If you just, it's it's mind-boggling the innovation that's happening at different levels of the stack when generative AI. I mean, we haven't even talked about LLM ops. <laughs> you know, right? We, we're still figuring on ML ops, and now we've got to figure out LLM ops, data right. management. Right. There's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of partnerships at different levels of the ecosystem, and there's going to be partnerships with um, uh, you know uh, other silicon providers as well. But Helix is is specific to Dell and Nvidia. Uh, and if I may just talk a little bit about how this came about, because one question I get here is like, did he, is this just something you guys created because all of this Gen AI stuff is happening and, or, or, or you know, was it lucky timing or what? And, and you know, of course, we, we didn't, like, it, it would be foolish to pretend that we knew what was going to happen with the generative AI piece 
and how quickly that moved. But the seeds of what Helix is were actually born two, two and a half years ago when we actually started working with NVIDIA on the XC9680, PowerEdge XC9680, which is the eight-way GPU. <laughs> and internally, when we started doing this effort, there was a lot of debate within Dell, like who needs an eight-way GPU? Yes. Who's yes. ever going to use an eight-way GPU? Yes. Why, are we do why are we doing all this co-engineering effort? H100s. Yes, so. co-engineering effort. Right. Are people really going to need that? And it was a really a lot of debates inside. And, 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 at, and at that point in time, we... Our thinking was, well, well, yes, we do think people are going to need it. Do we think people are going to be lining up to use it two years from now? No, but we thought it was very important for us to have a flagship, a really, you know, the Cadillac version of, of kind of exemplifying the design, cooling, being able to operate this at scale. And of course, that journey and the work we've done got us to a place where when this, this trend around Gen AI came up into chat GPT, it was very easy for us to say, you know what, we've got to take this to the next level. So... That's kind of the, the genesis of how this happened. It wasn't yesterday. It wasn't in November. It's really building upon the work we were already doing. Yeah, it's very exciting. And, and you're right, Pat. Dell's partnership kind of ethos was very on display here at Dell Technologies World. Yeah. I think with AI, it's going to be very important because it's kind of where is AI being led? And the, the big challenge, Rune, that I do believe is it's there's the silicon layer where everybody's kind of competing for the most compelling silicon and then, of course, there's the apps. And that's where kind of you saw how JetGPT took decades of work from Dell and other companies or, and made it instantaneously uh, popular in the market. By the way, like I said, we've been using, you know, I've used Google Workspaces. It's been finishing my sentences for two years. Yeah, that's now. right. That's right. This Gmail is not as well. actually yeah, and Outlook, all new. Yeah. Um, and we've seen right. how quickly a lot of companies came out because a lot of companies were just waiting. Someone had to move first. So we saw that happen. Right. But right. this is such a great topic. Pat, I think we need more time with him. Maybe a few more episodes to go deeper. Yeah. On we have this. we have many hours of conversation to drain here. So, yes, but, but I really appreciate you bringing me on. Way too much of a flyby, but for the on the road and for this event, Varun, we got to say thanks for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you for having show. me. It's always a pleasure to chat with you guys. Whatever topic it is, I learn a lot, and it's uh, it's always fun to talk to two people who love technology at its very heart. So, thank uh, you. It's always a pleasure. I'm happy to join you guys whenever you guys want. Me. Thank you. Thank you so much, that. Varun. All right. Everyone, thanks so much for tuning in here. This was a great session. We all know generative AI is a red hot topic. Getting the Dell perspective, hearing about the partnerships, what they're doing with Project Helix and everything else, you had it here. Hit subscribe, join us for all the episodes here at Dell Technologies World. We appreciate you tuning in for now, for Pat, for myself. We'll see you later.